Hi guys, going to make a short video on how to change a starter motor on a BMW. This is a 325CI petrol manual. Uh, the starter motor starting to go. Sometimes it starts first time, other times it takes a few attempts, but it's getting worse. So I'm going to change the starter today. So This is really what happens. It takes a couple of attempts sometimes. Nothing there at all. Okay, so we've got the car jacked up now. Sitting on blocks. Pretty high up off the ground. Enough room to get underneath. Uh, and on the top, what we're going to do is remove the air intake here. Just two 10mm bolts here. And we're also going to take this plastic panel off here so that we can get in down here so this all just comes off um, there's usually a little clip in here, plastic clip here holding it on and this here comes off as well uh, so we'll have a look underneath before we take it all apart okay so I've taken these two bolts out here we're going to take this connection out here push down and pull that out. Just leave that sitting there. And I've loosened this Jubilee clip off already. So let's pull that out of there. And pull this off. Difficult to do this one handed. And that's this pretty much loose. It's just a case of now pulling the top here towards like this thing comes out. Okay. And next we're going to take this off. This plastic cover here. So difficult to get a good angle. I'll just pull this out. This is just the seal that goes underneath here. So that's that. Set that on top. And I'm going to lift this out. Now, I've had this out before, and you can get it out without removing any of this. It's a bit tricky. But you can do it. So I'm, I need two hands, so I'm going to do that and then I'll show you after. Okay, so that's this panel come out. And really, the, the tricky bit of getting this out is you have to rotate it. Uh, either towards yourself like this, or away from yourself to get it around here. Because it locks in underneath all this. And really all that holds it on. You can see this these tabs here here and here these tabs sit against this wall in here anyway so that's that out and the starter motor is right in down here we can't see it so we're going to look from underneath ok so before we go under the car I just thought it would make sense to show you, um, this is the replacement starter, um, just show you how it's actually mounted on. A lot of this has to be done by feeling your way around because there's there's not a lot of room in there. Um, so it's, it's held on with two bolts, uh, the first one's through here, and the second one on this side, down here. So that's all really that holds it on. And you've got three uh, connections, uh, one here, one here, and one here. Um, I've taken the bolts out of the old one already, uh, and it's just held on with these. So they're held in from the back on, on this model, although the Haynes manual shows that they're actually held on from the front. They go in this way, um, so it makes it even more difficult on this model to get them out because they're 
they're in from the back. Um, so the first one's there and the second one is in there. So that's how it's actually held on. You can see that. So that's what you're feeling for, is for those two holes and those two bolts when you actually get under there. And what I used to take them out, I can't, there isn't enough room to get a socket uh, in there at all with a, a ratchet. So literally all I used was a, a 10 millimeter torque spanner, this end. Um, and that's just about five inches long, you can see. And that, that really is the only tool I could get in there, that there was enough room to get around the back of it and loosen that off. Um, so we'll try and have a look underneath, there's not a lot of room so it is quite difficult to see. Okay, so this is just a close-up of the starter. It's quite dark in here. So here's the main body of the starter here and the solenoid on the top. Right there, that's one of the the fixing bolts. And if you can see that is the electrical connection at the back on the on the solenoid. So let's see if I can get a pencil on there to show you. So that one there. Just put the pencil on the hole, the bolt is out already. So that's your first bolt. What you need to get round the back of it, which is over here, you need to get round the back of that to get that bolt out. So I did this all from underneath on this bolt. I used my torque spanner and I got round the back in here like this and because of all this the hoses and cables that is as much room as I've got so that's that's pretty much me in, in position there that would have been where the it was connecting to the bolt and all I did was just half a turn at a time and just loosen that bolt off like this and then back on again and this took about an hour to get this one out so back on and turn around like that and eventually that bolt came out so I'll try and show you down here how I'm getting my hand up here because there's not a lot of room and this is without taking anything else off so bear with me so here I am under the car and you can see uh, the exhaust there. So we come further back. I'm getting my hand in here. So I go up into this space here. So I go up here and then around. And we can just see the, the body of the starter up here. So it's up here and round the back and then I can get my the spanner in around there. This is back a bit. So through this gap here. And that's without taking this under shield off here. The Haynes manual tells you to do that but I've not taken this off. This has stayed on. And I can just get up through here and round like this. Again, just to clarify, uh, from underneath the car, without taking anything off on the underside, I managed to get the this bolt out. And what you do from the top, I just run my fingers along the old one and feel my way around the top until I get to the bolt on this side down here. And this bolt on this side I get from the top of the car. Um, and I'll show you how, how I do that. So remember we took the plastic cover off earlier. What we're trying to do here is get right into there. Um, these hoses here 
all in the way. Now, I've heard people disconnect these and whatnot. I just push them out of the way. I'm using my left hand to get right down into the space in here. Uh, and we can see the, the starter just in there. So, again, using the same spanner, 10mm uh, torque spanner, the small one. I just put my hand down into here and basically just feel my way right down into here, feel my way around the starter motor until I get to that far side where the bolt is and again just half a turn at a time just loosen it off and again that took about an hour but I didn't have to, to take anything off the car at all um, bar this plastic cover um, that we showed you at the start and a bit of patience and a bit of time and I managed to get that second bolt loosened off completely so both the bolts are out, it's just a case now of disconnecting the electrical connection, which I'm going to do now. Uh, it's worth mentioning, I forgot to say, um, to disconnect the battery, um, just what the Haynes manual said again, uh, to disconnect the negative terminal of the battery um, before you carry any work on the, on the starter at all. Um, so I did that before we started. Uh, so disconnect the negative terminal, the battery in this model's in the back of the car. Um, so really important to do that before you start taking the, the wires off the starter. Um. Okay, so accessing this from the same point below as before. And coming up the back of it. now just getting this this is the starter now loose off of its mount now you see we can almost pull that out but it's just these connections here that are stopping it so so we've got this loosened this nut off this is a 13 millimeter a flange nut so that frees up the connection here. You can just take that off now. Uh, and I think the other ones are an 8 and a 12. I'm not sure I'll, I'll do them next. But it's taken a bit to, to get in here. Again, just half a turn at a time with the, uh, a small socket and a small 13mm spanner. Um, I'm going to try and get the other two off now. So now I've got the the nut that I just showed you, that just came off, that was the top connection here. Uh, now that I've taken them off, it's freed up a lot of uh, uh, manoeuvrability in the starter. So we can actually pull that right out and to the side now. And this is from the top, you can see here. So I've actually pulled that right over to the side, so I can now get at those those connections um, from the top quite easily now. Um, a bit more space. So again, I'm not taking anything else out. It's just freed up a bit of space there to to get in to get these connections out here. So I'll take them out, and that hopefully will be it free. Uh, so there's the starter there. Just when I took the connections off, I've just put a bit of tape around. Um, just a bit of earth tape uh, around one side so you can see there this one's got a bit of earth tape around it and what I used to get the the bolts off I found the easiest because the, there isn't room for a, a socket in there it was just a ratchet screwdriver and I just went straight in like this down into here and uh, took them off so, and then I've put my bit of tape on my new one, so that I know that that matches with that one, so I don't get them mixed up. So that's a good idea. Make sure you put them back on the right way. You don't want to go through all this and uh, find out it's, it's gone back on the wrong way. So that's the starter ready to come out now. So I'll, I'll get under the car and, and pull it out. So uh, this is the old one. It's come out. It's just a bit worn around the, the teeth here. 
compared to the nice new ones, you know. Um, anyway, so that's it out. So that's great. So in order to get that out, um, all I've taken off are these two bits here. So the the cover um, above the wheel and the air intake, and that's literally all I've all I've had to take out. Most of it's been through the the top here. Um, you do have to be very patient. It takes a long time to get the the long bolts out with the little spanner, but there just isn't enough room in there to to get a long uh, ratchet or a socket. So um, anyway, that's that's worked. That's it come out. So um, just a case of hooking the new one back up. So I'll try and show you that. Okay, so that's me got the the new one in and then down here. You can see that's the just the connections on just now. Let's see if we can get a bit closer. Uh, and you can see behind this hose, that's the two bits of of tape that I put on uh, to make sure I put them back on the right way again. So I put the two smaller bolts on first that was an 8mm and a 10 and then I did the this one with the red tape on it here I did that last because that's got the last the, the least slack on the cable um, so it's not repositioned or rehoused yet in, in the actual car but that's the connections done and that was all done from the top and Again, I did all three of those just using this uh, screwdriver with, this is the, the 13 mil uh, and an 8 and a 10 and I just got that in there and tightened them all up. I gave them a, a final tighten with a spanner. Okay, just a <coughs> quick note here, um, underneath the car again obviously, uh, I had to disconnect the big 13mm connections here, the main one on the top here, uh, to get it rehoused properly, to get it to fit back in again because there, there was just too much tension on these cables, uh, not enough slack to get it in, so I had to take it off, uh, rehouse the starter motor properly, and I'm just going to put this back on now. Now that it's in place, so that's it. That's it in there properly now. Um, I just need to line up the bolt uh, just here. That's the first bolt there, and the other one is on the other side. Not a lot of room in here at all. So I, anyway, just um, a good idea. Connect the smaller ones. Uh, on the sides but maybe leave that top one off until you've got it back uh, in position and then put it on after that ok so that nut's now nice and tight we're going to start putting the bolts back in so they come through from the back on this model uh, again this is the uh, 2000 325CI 2.5 uh, litre petrol so I need to get these bolts back in from the back this is the hard bit so that slots in there as well you can see that it's that hole it slots in over the back there and that will obviously line up with this hole here So I'm just going to try and show you the position of the first bolt, the mounting bolt, that goes in, which is right down in here. You can see it just there, right there. Um, I have enough hands here. Uh, 
I'll move these out of the way. I'm going to get the other one lined up first though on the other side. And again, I do that from the top and I just feel my way across the top of the starter motor housing. Uh, get the bolt in and make sure it's it's starting to, to grab before I tighten either of them so that I know that it's definitely lined up. And I get them both, tighten them both from the top with that small 10mm um, torque spanner. And you're only getting about a quarter of a turn at a time because there's not enough room. But you just can't get at it from underneath. So I'm going to start doing that now, tightening them up, and we should be ready to go. Okay, I'll just show a little clip of how I'm actually tightening this up. And this is the same way that I got it off as well. So just hooking the spanner on, back end here, and then just half a turn at a time. There just isn't enough room to get a so hooking on, and then just half a turn at a time. And after about 40 minutes you get there. Just wanted to try and show you, again this is from the, the top, uh, where the second bolt is. You can just see it in there. Right there, that's the second mounting bolt. So I've already got, I've got the first one in, I did the, the first one from underneath. Uh, again just with a handheld 10mm torque spanner and I'm going to do the same from the top on this second bolt which is just there and you can see see it sticking out there so I've, I've tightened that as much as I can uh, with my fingers and now I'm going to do it with the spanner so that's it just right there so it's just a case of getting my hand in through this gap and under these hoses here uh, it's the same way that I got it out. Just uh, another note, this might be handy to know. Um, because the battery is in the back of the car here, um, it started raining. Um, so I closed the, the tailgate over. And um, it locked and the battery was still disconnected. So I couldn't get the, the tailgate open again because it runs on a solenoid. Um, so what I had to do was go in the back seat and take out the speaker, which is just here, take the speaker out uh, completely from the back seat, just with a screwdriver and um, a socket, and reach in through this hole from the back and push this release lever, and that released the back seat uh, here. I could get in and reconnect the battery. So it's just uh, handy to know. Um, I didn't really think that one through when I closed the, the tailgate, but that's that's good to know. So if that ever happens, then you can get in through there, uh, through the speaker, because I've heard of people having to drill holes in the, the tailgate or cut holes in the back seat um, going through the, the speaker hole, and you can release the seat. So that's the battery connected again, and I'm about to try for the first time with the new starter connected. So here we are, everything's all hooked up. And this is what they say, the moment of truth. Excellent. I'm just going to try it a couple of times. Yeah, that's just so much better. Uh, before it usually took either two or three, sometimes five or six times uh, to start, and that's uh, that's instant. So, um, job well done. So, just a few final notes. Um, obviously, the most difficult part of this job is to to take the, the bolts out. Um, again, uh, here and here, 
Um, I just had this lying around in my toolbox. I had to bo borrow a socket set from a friend. Um, but this is what did the job. Uh, but I would highly recommend to save time and a huge amount of effort is to get a ratchet spanner. Uh, so this this is 10 mil. It says 10 millimeter. Um, I think you get a E14 Torx spanner. I think you have to double check that. I, I saw that in another video. Um, E14 Torx ratchet spanner is what you need, and that'll make this whole job a lot quicker and easier. Uh, as I say, I use I use just a screwdriver with these bits on it to get the smaller connections off the the starter as well, um, and obviously this just to to take other bits and pieces off. Um, I've I've never done a job like this before. I've I've got no mechanical knowledge really about cars, uh, short of changing a tire. I've never really done anything on a car before. I just wanted to show how uh, easy this this job could be um, if you're just patient. Uh, and again, I've seen videos where they take off the intake manifold here and they take off all this um, and even down below they take off the the under shield all I've taken off are these two pieces here which is obviously the air intake here box and this plastic cover in there and the whole job has been done start to finish uh, it has taken me a long time it's taken me a day uh, to do this but as I say I've got no experience or, or real knowledge about cars at all um, but I just wanted to give it a go, so I've, I've saved a huge amount of money doing it myself and everything's working perfectly well. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope it can be help uh, to you if you want to tackle this yourself. It's notorious, this job, um, but it can be done. Um, if you're a bit more experienced, then taking these hoses off and whatnot uh, could make the job a lot easier um, and quicker. And of course, taking this off here and the intake manifold off as well will give you a lot more space um, but because of my lack of experience I didn't really want to disconnect anything that I wasn't sure what it was so uh, I just got, got stuck in and I've managed to do the whole thing in a day um, just with a little handheld 10 mil spanner so, uh, so good luck to you and um, wish you all the best if you're tackling this yourself